Hello everyone, welcome to the next session of SAP GRC Access Control. In this, in this session we will see SOD, Risk Management, uh, Understanding and Identification of Authorization Risk. This session is very important that we need to understand what is the concept behind SOD. Okay, in this presentation what I'm trying to explain this is the purchase process let's say if you wanted to purchase something we go to ME51 or ME51N and create a purchase request session let's say you wanted to purchase some goods then the purchase request session is sent to uh, purchasing manager or whoever create a purchase order you will go to ME21 and uh, convert this purchase request into a purchase order or include this purchase request into a purchase order or they will create their one purchase order without purchase request or whatever based on their company policy and customization then this purchase order is given to the vendor then vendor will send uh, goods then then it goes to the warehouse or stores then stores will do the good receipt meaning that good is uh, to confirm that we received these goods then it goes for an invoice verification along with the goods then you will have an invoice the invoice verification is done basically we will do this invoice verification and you, this during the invoice verification you can also adjust the value of the purchase order if there is some differences uh, during the purchase order issued or and the invoices which can be reconciled then it goes to FI after invoice is verified for uh, payment processing okay let let's assume now we have all this auth authorization with one one user let's say the user want to do some intentional transaction let's, meaning want to do some fraud then let's say if the user also having authorization for XK01 XK01 is for creating bank account so he create a bank account then he he or she create a purchase request or purchase order then gave it to some to the bank account wherever it was created and uh, got a good receipt done but the goods is still not there in the store and the invoice is verified then they go to F110 and uh, execute the payment run so the particular bank which you have created or the vendor which you have created already got the money in the bank and but you don't have any goods inside the company so this in this full cycle if you see without doing having any uh, goods inside the company you can easily make a big transaction if you have all this authorization with one person so let's go to the next example it's a very interesting one uh, authorization on HR let's say one person uh, have all this authorization then normally how does the HR payroll process works first they will run a simulation for your payroll and the payroll is uh, release then we'll run the actual payroll run then once the payroll is run then it will pre uh, will prepare a bank transfer once a bank transfers this is this will be done by FI because again it's a uh, account payable yeah done by bank tra bank transfer is uh, prepared then after the bank transfer is pre prepared is you will create a payment file which needs to be sent to the bank this will be in yeah, so many cases we this will be also an automated this file will be sent to the respective bank automatically then let's assume all this authorization is with one person okay then it's a very big risk how does it become risk this particular person also have authorization for PA30 so this this person can go and change her own salary and go and do all this uh, 
payroll process for themselves and we got all the money in the bank very easy then next one is for example change benefits the HR benefits I mean the HR benefits also they can change and they can do the payroll process again because benefits again comes with your payroll and modify time data for example if if let's say some the you have salary paid out based on number of hours worked then you can go to if you have authorization to PA Six, uh, 63 you can go to PA 63 and enter the time data then you have a lot of uh, hours which is been booked and run the payroll process you can also put some false time data in PA 71 and uh, run payroll processing or let's say printing salary statement by unauthorized person this is very critical authorization because salary statement is a very confidential information that who is supposed to print that needs to be well defined and if you give authorization to print salary statement to unauthorized people then they can uh, print the salary statement and uh, misuse the same or if print it for somebody else or print it for own with a different uh, uh, different uh, amount which which is actually coming in in PA 30 you can go and change it then you make a salary statement to be printed so this this will create a very big impact in our organization so we identified this risk this risk how do we control this one that is the segregation of duty so segregation of duties means that all the sensitive authorization we need to involve as many people as possible that means you may know this 4i principle and or 4 head principle 4i principle mean 2 head principle and 4 head principle so so we need to involve so many people into this uh, business process so if if you involve many people in the business process though doing some fraud by one or two person can be avoided so if if it is many people involved then it is more safe so that a lot of people knows the verifies what is this transaction so this the fraud happen in this uh, SOD restricted uh, environment will be very less so with this we are coming to the end of the session thank you for listening I will see you in the next session bye bye